Token and I have been working together since he was 16 years old. So that's a long time. That's like nine years or something. Is that nine years? We've definitely developed a, a style over the course of the nine years of doing all these videos. That's just kind of like crazy and cartoony and weird. And um, Token is the main responsible uh, brain behind it. I mean, he's he has always written uh, the treatment since all the way back to doozy. So, but his his brain is crazy, and um, he's always been challenging me to like pushing yourself. Yeah, yeah, to expand what I my knowledge of editing, basically. And he sits with me and like, you know, really driving. He, he put yeah, he pushes the limit, and because he's so young. I feel more empowered to do the things he's asking of me. You know what I mean? Because right. I have like a certain, I guess, like respect to younger people. Just in, just in Especially general. the ones that hustle. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so Andrew, uh, if, how, what, uh, when did we meet? It must have been around. I also? met Ben when I was 18. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, because you're also young. I like, saw a token video and I seeked him out from it. So I was thinking of Andrew and I had a, had a conversation with um, Tok because we did the, had to, just done the mac and cheese video, and I and I had a conversation with Token. He wanted to he wanted to create a new a new sound a new visual style from everything we've done so far. So we were kind of we kind of started thinking to ourselves like, okay, what do we do that's different? Or, or, if, or if we've done it before, like, that's bad, <laughs> you know? Even if it feels like a great idea, like, let's, let's steer away from that thing. I had uh, thrown out the idea of, like, doing big virtual 3D rooms, and, and that way we could have Andrew um, create all these environments. And, like be, and so from there, we became, like, a, a three-person brainchild at that point. Token wanted to build some environments that felt kind of like airy and made you have like experience this kind of feeling of newfound nostalgia when you, when you see um, the environment and just something that almost like is a little bit kind of creepy, but also, you know, interesting and visually compelling um, to match with this big shift in his style of music that just is very much more experimental um, than maybe some of his previous stuff was at times. Yeah, would you say like childhood nightmare? Is yeah, it, is kind it... of almost like somewhere that you feel like you might have been before in the past. Yeah. That's kind of the nostalgia factor that we're referring to, but... Yeah. There's probably nobody on this earth who hasn't had a childhood nightmare. <laughs> yeah. You know, that they can refer back to or, right. you know... I loved you know. having nightmares when I was a yeah. kid, well, to be honest. You guys are about to create some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to give anybody nightmares. How, how does it start from conception to like how do you get those people spinning what's the process look like well so the process at least starting from a concept we were thinking about putting token on like a giant xylophone and that idea just like fizzled out <laughs> but then we were like yeah, oh we should right. have a crowd around the xylophone but then we just like, scrapped the xylophone right the and then we just moved on to i always thought of those things as naked barbies yeah, kind of naked. Some people are Maybe calling them mannequins. Barbie, the movie Barbie came uh, out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then the process from there was we went into Unreal Engine. We started developing the environment. Before that, we tried Blender, but it was just limiting as far as our resources go. We didn't have the hardware resources to run all those character animations and like high poly counts with all those duplicates of that female model. So what we ended up doing was we went to Unreal Engine, we started building the environment, and we actually used a website called Mixamo. And Mixamo will take a model and rig it for you. Rigging is the process of adding like skeleton in your model and different parts of the mesh are skinned to, to be weighted to that armature. So as you move that armature, right, it's like moving the surrounding mesh as well. So, um, what we did was we went on Mixamo, worked together to pick out a bunch of like cool animations and dances since we we don't have a mocap suit. <laughs> so 
So we opted to use Mixamo because it will give us all the animation data already mapped to our character. So all we got to do is drop that into Unreal Engine and then edit it like a normal timeline as far as the certain dance moves we're doing. And then the overlap between those different dance moves, it'll automatically interpolate those frames. So it'll go from one move to another move, seemingly convincingly. The camera movement of the video, I did keyframe real time with an Xbox controller. But you just plug in an Xbox controller into your computer and it'll automatically sync to Unreal Engine. Anyone can do it. You still have to nail the shot with the, you know, it's like playing a video game and you mm. have to be good at the game. So you're able to move it around, you know, pan, tilt, like altitude. Um, and from there, you just basically are live recording it with the music playing as a separate track and you're able to get all this awesome camera animation data and then you do it again and again and again. And then we let Ben figure out exactly where to put it all. One angle for the entire song, having the camera dolly forward and back or just doing a free flow one where the camera's flying around for creating the camera movements, the lighting movements. We really wanted to kind of emphasize the energy and momentum of the song, which maybe you would want to talk about a little is just like how the song plays into well, yeah, and also, you know, shout out to Knox, too. He, I mean, this beat is insane. The, the, the craziest beat ever. That's, that's pretty crazy, yeah. bro. Visually, it's like, yeah, like, always we follow the music in any, in any little tiny way possible, no matter what. How many, how many um, floating um, or spinning pe uh, people were there? Wow, that's or, a good... Um, 100 and... 68. <laughs> it's like a circle of running people. And the shadows would go by. I wanted to mimic that. So I had um, Aaron Brown and uh, and this that other dude um, whose actually name was Prue, who actually looks like my grandfather, which is... <laughs> <laughs> those, those guys literally had pillows like this in front of the lights <laughs> while we shot the performance takes with Token. Yeah. And then Token... So the shadows are just pillows. Yep. Yeah, and we got the different angles of him to match the shots and then put them in there and composited. Having a home base where I can go from my edit bay right to shooting, 30 feet away, back to the editing bay, ingest that footage, go back to shoot some more footage, punch punch stuff in. Um, it creates a really great process for creativity. And Token and I have been doing that kind of a process for years and years now because we can, because it's right there. Oh, we had the layer, uh, yeah. the front layer. I was gonna talk about that. That's kind of interesting. One of the trickiest uh, problems we encountered was that when you put Token in the middle of these people, he would be kind of overlapping some of them in a way. So we would either have to mask out part of Token or figure out a way to separate this into a background and foreground. So what we had settled on after a lot of trial and error was to basically take a green unlit plane, put that in the middle of the scene, so that that way we could use that as a green screen, key that out, and then have separate foreground and background elements um, that are timed exactly the same. So we were able to make kind of a token sandwich, back plate, token, front plate. For us, it's just, we're just, this is, this is a playground to like get better and better and better and better. You do gotta stay ahead of um, tech, Andrew, Andrew is just a person who's really on top of these um, these 3D programs, which is which is really where the biggest ideas can happen, especially yeah. in a music video space. Yeah, right. That's an area that I think is important, you know, for if, for us to expand and create a strong presence. Right. And Token's a perfect person to be working. You know, I have such a good relationship with him, and and. Mm -hmm. And he's his brain is is so um, geniusly fantastical. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's he's nuts. So you he's know. like a kid in a candy factory when he sees this program because he can yeah. just change anything he wants, and yeah. it's all I'm sitting right there to do it real time. So we and, it's a triangle of input from all of us, just kind of bouncing ideas as we're creating this, and it's definitely a vibe. It's just a playground for, for childlike. And fun. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah, make a car window in the middle of the room and a boot tap, you know, and make let's make five boots tap and yeah. having fun. Uh, yeah. Having fun again. And see how far we can push it in a way where we're exploring 
what Andrew can get the programs to do. Yeah. And token has been, like I say, the really the, the one pushing me in my editing mm -hmm. my whole life yeah. <laughs> or my whole career. Yeah. Um, almost. So now we're just continuing that, which is cool. Which shout, is, shout out to token then. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. A bit huge shout out to token. Obviously he's, he's a, he's a creative genius. And just that feeling of when you see it and it plays back and you go, ooh. It started with a xylophone and now it looks <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we had many, I mean, over the course of this, all these projects, really, we've had, we've had those moments. You're onto something. Yeah. Yeah, you got to enjoy the little things and it really helps to work with someone who understands what you're getting at. And that goes for anything, but me and Ben, like, there's never a question in our minds when we're working on something that, you know, I see where you're going with this. It's not like a, this is terrible. It's like, maybe we should try this or maybe we should adjust that. Just completely like open feedback. And Collab. it's always a really good loop. And that's how we get the best results on everything. We just dissect it. We drop each other's opinions and we, yep. you know, th there's, uh, there's no shame in little mistakes. We just kind of nitpick it yeah. until it gets exactly how it should be. Yeah. 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 Soon we want to basically be able to track the camera real time in the environment. That way we can see on the actual camera monitor what the computer generated background looks like while we're moving and see those camera movements updated in real time in the software. So essentially all we have to do after that is get rid of the green screen or blue screen, overlay that over the back plate and everything will line up seamlessly, maximize our capabilities and make the pipeline as efficient as possible. Yeah. And then, you know, in the off time, work on the craft as well, which yeah, is that's so, screw around. That's something that Andrew shit. does that that's, you know, that's a huge, I mean, that's something I love about yeah. Andrew is that he's just constantly doing this program, yep. even when it's not time to work, but it's time to play is, yeah. is really what it is I mean, for him. You is have what this it is. giant virtual sandbox. You got to mess with it. We, it's been a long time of trial and error. And it's, but it's also a long time still to go. Yeah, for sure. We're going to build and build and build and build. I'm definitely pretty ambitious. I, and you're pretty ambitious and we're pretty ambitious. Yeah. So. Keep pushing it. It's going down.